A new study finds that statins lower the protective gut hormone known as GLP-1 by more than 50%. I'm not sure why this is not major news because we've heard so much about semiglutide and Ozempic as a pharmacologic agent that can help with fat loss and improving blood sugar regulation, particularly in type 2 diabetics, because it turns out that individuals that are overweight and or have diabetes or prediabetes have a reduction in this critically important gut hormone known as glucagon-like peptide 1, or GLP-1 for short. And this 12-week study found that atorvastatin cuts GLP-1 levels by more than 50%. Now, this is incredible. And I learned about this paper from Nick Norwitz, who we recently did a collaboration. I can link some of that information right here. Uh, he has a really good Substack article on this titled, The Statin Study Should Have Changed Medicine. Why is no one talking about this? So we're going to really dive into this and thank Nick for putting out amazing work, uh, particularly uh, in the realm of metabolic health in this particular paper. So just very interesting here. As you can see here from this graphical abstract of the 16-week study, sorry, I said 12 weeks, it's 16 weeks, uh, investigators randomized um, 30 subjects to either take 20 milligrams of atorvastatin per day or then they had a control group. And they looked at various... Um, biomarkers related to metabolic health. Uh, for example, total cholesterol. Now, we know that statins are an HMG-CoA reductase inhibitor, and what that means, that's a multi-syllabic jargonistic term to talk about how statins actually lower cholesterol because they inhibit, they put the brakes on the cellular synthesis of cholesterol, which of course has downstream consequences because cholesterol is not the only metabolite that is metabolized through this isoprenoid pathway. There's jaranol, jaranol, and farnesyl, and coenzyme Q10. There's all those sorts of different things uh, made downstream of HMG-CoA reductase, which really helps to synthesize the cholesterol molecules. Because a lot of people think that, well, my blood cholesterol is high because I eat dietary cholesterol. Well, it turns out that dietary cholesterol is poorly absorbed and has relatively no impact on serum cholesterol because most of your blood cholesterol is actually made endogenously in your own body by your liver. And so that's why there's various pharmacologic agents to either inhibit the uh, synthesis of cholesterol, such as statins, or to increase the uh, release of that, such as the PCSK9 inhibitors with the LDL receptor activation and so forth. So anyway, back to the study. I mean, this is interesting. You can see here, of course, LDL cholesterol goes down when individuals take <laughs> statins, right? Because it just puts a road, it just basically stops the synthesis of cholesterol. But what is not widely known by many people is the unintended harms of suppressing this enzyme known as HMG-CoA reductase with a statin. Well, as we see here, GLP-1 gets cut in half. Now, why is that important? Because it turns out that your gut hormones speak to your peripheral metabolic systems, and they are an intimately and intricately connected aspect to blood sugar regulation, the gut hormones. You can take a full-blown type 2 diabetic and give them and manipulate their intestine with various, you know, uh, bariatric surg surgical procedures, whether it's Rao and Y or lap band procedures. And within hours, they will no longer need to be dependent upon insulin in the hospital. This has been widely known. And this is why I wrote the book Belly Fat Effect in 2014. I was just blown away at this literature. And this is how the GLP-1 agonists, as well as the DPP-4 inhibitors, there's an enzyme that your intestines make called DPP-4 that will actually break down GLP-1. GLP-1 is protective. It helps to augment insulin functioning in, because as you know, um, these hormones are released from the gut and they go speak to the peripheral parts of your metabolic physiology, your liver, your brain, and so forth. There's GLP-1 uh, physiology all throughout the body. And GLP-1 is just one of many important hormones. There's 26 different gut hormones. But back to the study. The study found that after 16 weeks of statin use, GLP-1 levels are cut by half. Statistical significant decreases in GLP-1. And what is temporally associated with that? Well, you see an increase in insulin, you see an increase in hemoglobin A1C, increase in C-peptide, uh, all things you don't really want. Yes, LDL cholesterol did go down, right? And we know that the medical community is monomaniacally focused on reducing LDL cholesterol. But at what cost does that incur? What are the unintended harms of lowering cholesterol by way of statins? Reduce GLP-1, increase insulin, increase hemoglobin A1c, increase HOMA-IR. Uh, all those things are 
independent cardiovascular and cardiometabolic health risk factors, right? So yes, we're theoretically reducing one associated risk factor, LDL cholesterol, but we're causing all these other things to go wrong. And people should be aware of this when they're prescribed a statin because many individuals go and get their annual physical with their nurse practitioner, their physician's assistant, their doctor, their LDL is high and they're prescribed a statin. Well, shouldn't people know that there's this important gut hormone known as GLP-1 that is known to be low in obesity and diabetes and taking statins would even lower it more? What are the long-term ramifications of this? And so I think this is really important. So as Nick goes on to say, the study explores how statins, the most profitable drug in history, with annual sales exceeding 20 billion, 20 billion, just keep that in mind, contribute to insulin resistance, increase diabetes risk, and significantly lower GLP-1 levels in humans. He goes on to say, so in effect, the most profitable drug on the planet prescribed to about one in four individuals over the age of 40 may increase metabolic demand for the most popular drug class by disrupting the same biology those drugs are trying to correct. Wild, right? So you take the statin and then you need the semi-glutide, right? I mean, that's a brilliant business model if you're in that industry. I mean, let's be honest. So uh, as you can see here, from figure one that we've been talking about, GLP-1 levels are cut in half. Now, the question is why? Why mechanistically do statins do this? Well, it turns out that this may have to do with the impact that statins have on the gut microbiome as the paper goes into. Um, but they don't really have a formal explanation as to why this may be. But this clinical trial did in fact show that GLP-1 levels are cut in half and it might have to do with bile acid shifts. And so this is another important thing to consider. Bile acids are not just involved in helping to saponify or metabolize fat. Bile acids play a very important systemic role uh, in impact uh, the brain and, and beyond. And by possibly shifting the microbiome, you shift the bile acid metabolites that could then affect the GLP-1 axis. And so they had a secondary arm of the study where they looked at uh, mechanistically, they looked at mice and they were able to sacrifice these mice and uh, looked at different metabolites and so forth. So they speculate possibly it could be due to this bile acid shift known as UDCA. And so, you know, if you do take a statin, you could supplement with UDCA potentially, and that could help you know, impact the, the shifts there. So I think that's interesting to consider. I you know, take bile acid sometimes, um, but some people could uh, benefit from uh, taking supplemental Tudka, uh, T-U-D-C-A. These are bile acid. I, I'm pretty sure it's ox bile uh, is where that, that, excuse me, comes from. So that's something to consider. Or you could consider more natural approaches to impacting uh, blood lipid levels. For example, berberine. Berberine is has been used for like 3,000 years in traditional Chinese medicine. It's a really reliable and effective way to support metabolic health. And how it, it works is actually by impacting the gut hormones and gut microbiome. So I'll put links in the description below. That's a, a tool that people can use and, and consider. But I think it's something we should know about, you know, um, especially if you're on a statin or you're considering going on a statin, you should understand that there are, are risks um, outside of rhabdomyolysis and some of these other things. So I would like to know what your thoughts are. And again, I want to thank Nick Norwitz. Definitely check out his channel. If you like this video, please hit that like button. Leave me a comment and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And we'll catch you on a future one down the road.